Um, I hope you can hear me from the other side of this pillar, which we had specially designed <laughs> so that teachers could hide behind it. Right okay, so uh, we'll make a start. We've got in this first session an hour and a quarter, a little less than that. We've got six very interesting and exciting speakers who are going to talk to us on different aspects of new learning environments. Each one um, I've asked to speak for about eight minutes. Um, that will leave us with the space in between and um, some toing and froing about 15 minutes at the end for your questions and for responses. So I want to make sure that we have that. So I'm going to be quite draconian with my, my timing. I'm going to cut people off, remove the microphones. Um, despite, you know, where they are, because we have these six speakers, so it's very important that we actually have an opportunity to hear them, and then for you to actually ask, and for them to answer questions. Okay, so uh, not all of our presenters are here at this moment, but it doesn't matter, because we have so many. We can go through, um, we can go through, uh, and we can change the order. But I think we'll, at the moment, we'll go, uh, we'll follow the order um, that we've got on here. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Bob Fox, and I'm a Deputy Director of the uh, site, the Centre for IT and Education and Faculty of Education. And uh, CITERS is a kind of like a long tradition. We've been running these uh, annual conferences for something like 12 years. So uh, it's nice to see you all here. Uh, and this is yet another one of those, I think, they're all special. This is the latest of the specials. Okay, so, just to reiterate, the title for this opening panel discussion is New Learning Environments, Changed Practices in Higher Education. <laughs> so, are, you know, all this money that's gone into it, is it making a difference? Okay, are these new spaces both physical and virtual? Okay, we've got, um, I'll just run through who we've got, and then I'll ask each one an intern to come up to do their eight minutes. We've got um, Ms. Esther Wu, who is the Head of Administrative Services at the Hong Kong New Libraries, and they've been doing lots of really exciting and interesting things to do with learning spaces and also changing library practices. Then uh, Dr. Josie Setti, who is a, a Senior Education Development Officer in the Education Development Center at the Hong Kong Poly U, and they've been doing some really interesting things in virtual spaces, but also they had very interesting problems and challenges with uh, physical spaces because they don't have a lot of extra room in that university, so that's, that's interesting. Uh, we've got Professor Paul Lam from CLEAR, the Center for Learning Enhancement and Research at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and I know that uh, the Chinese university has been doing some very interesting things. So I'm really looking forward to hearing the, the latest and the greatest of what's happening in the, that university. We've got uh, Professor Nancy Law, who's the director of SITE in the Faculty of Education here at Hong Kong U, and she'll be talking about some of the exciting things that have been happening uh, at this university, especially within our Faculty of Education in this, this space, both physical and virtual. And then uh, Mr. Brandt, uh, Knutzin, who is our learning designer of the Faculty of Education at Hong Kong U, who's very much involved in practice and thinking about how we can use spaces, physical and virtual spaces, in innovative and creative ways. So uh, that's going to be great. And then uh, a new member of staff, we've got Miss Tony Kelly, who is Associate Director of Learning Environments at Hong Kong U. And she has overall responsibility for all kinds of learning environments here at this university uh, and innovative spaces, planning for new spaces, thinking of changing new spaces. A lot of work is going on. So really exciting to, to have Tony here with us. Uh, and she's come to us, we've, we've stolen her from the University of Birmingham in the UK, and the University of Birmingham over the years has been a leader in learning spaces for mm, certainly the last, how long have you been at Birmingham? 20 years. For the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> for the last eight. <laughs> for 
particular, particularly for the last eight, uh, when the UK was really doing some interesting work. Okay, so uh, we'll start off with Miss Esther Wu, uh, the um, from the Hong Kong U Libraries. Thank you. <laughs> We should have designed this. So, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Esther from the uh, Hong Kong U Library. Uh, I'm very pleased to have the chance to introduce to you our not too new facility called Level 3, uh, which is actually a learning common style facility um, opening uh, in late 2011 um, in a staggering schedule because of uh, the very different uh, needs of our uh, semester in the past uh, years. So um, first of all, I would like to uh, let you know why uh, I picked this um, topic, ecosystem, uh, as the analogy of our new facility. Uh, actually, after observing the uh, uh, use of that facility for almost one year, I realized that uh, we're not just introducing a learning space, but actually an ecosystem, which is a very complex uh, uh, unity, uh, introducing a lot of interaction between different players. So I would like to uh, analyze this facility uh, along this line. So uh, before uh, we go on to the uh, details, I would like to tell you why we have to create such a facility. Uh, it, uh, this, the planning started about a five, uh, in 2005, almost eight years ago. Uh, at that time, uh, we are not having a crystal ball, and we have to uh, really guess what will be happening in eight years' time. <coughs> and you, you know how difficult it will be. So uh, we're de uh, planning on a future with a lot of changes and uncertainty. And here are some um, pictures we took uh, at that time when we prepare our funding proposal to the UGC for the AA and I funding. And you can see, uh, at that time, we have lots of uh, students uh, enjoying our facility, but in a very <laughs> interesting way, say, like, uh, th this group of students, they're sitting in front of our librarian's office, on the floor, <laughs> discussing. And uh, some even make use of our uh, emergency exit, <laughs> uh, be because there are some PowerPoints, and they have to gather along these areas to do their self-study. Uh, and also they make use of low shelf to do their uh, research and studies anytime and anywhere. And also uh, you can see, I guess only one caught here, but we are, have several at the back, uh, meaning that a lot of people are looking for PowerPoints and network points to do their study and uh, research. So with the um, challenges of the new curriculum, uh, this academic year, and also the very diversified learning mode of our users, and also their need to the uh, internet anywhere, anytime. And uh, also a very major concern because they need a lot of access to sockets. You can imagine the uh, power usage will be very high. And it's an, actually an environmental issue to uh, the university as well. So when we plan the uh, facility, we try to balance our consumption and also uh, uh, environmental protection uh, uh, idea on the campus. So this is the new uh, learning uh, facility, uh, learning, uh, level three, uh, on the third floor of our library. Uh, it kind of serves as a new habitat for our users, and we try to make use of the uh, Sony to uh, provide different kinds of learning environment to our users. No matter they're looking for, say, like very quiet learning space, group discussion space, they're looking for information, uh, by inquiring at our counter, or doing, uh, say, internet <coughs> searching or discussion, and uh, even very flexible um, activities at a multi-purpose zone. And also, uh, say, if they want to take a rest, we also provide breakout zone with vending machines, TVs, and sofas, and they can even take a nap in between <laughs> the time they study. So this is um, the general layout of the uh, level three. 
And uh, the major components of this uh, facility, actually, uh, according to our planning, is to provide uh, plenty of seating. We have over 800 seats there uh, with different kinds of uh, mold uh, for uh, individuals and groups. And also, we try to uh, provide a lot of flexibility to our users. Uh, we make use of uh, some, say, mobile petitions, mobile uh, furniture, all on casters. And we make use of the technology almost all over the place uh, to provide them uh, instant access to the internet and connection to other people around the world. And uh, we also provide an integrative um, uh, information counter so that we can take care of their needs at any time. And uh, they also ask for extended opening hours, so we uh, 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 make use of two of the uh, songs, the collaboration song and the uh, self-study song, uh, to provide extended opening hours almost 24 by 7 every week. And uh, we try to encourage self-service, because uh, not just, just because of the downsizing of our libraries, but because we realize that uh, nowadays new generation want to serve by, by themselves. And um, we also try to um, create an inspirational ambience for learning because we believe that uh, having such an environment can promote the learning of our uh, students and researchers. And uh, as I have just uh, mentioned, we introduced some green initiatives like uh, LED lighting, uh, environmental friendly flushing uh, water system, and also air conditioning system. So now I'm going to show you uh, just a very brief uh, video of our level 3 facility so that you will have a feel of how it's operating. Sorry, I guess uh, there's uh, some background music. <laughs> two, two and a half minutes. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, uh, maybe I can give you some more information about the, the zones. Uh, in the um, study zone, we have uh, over uh, 80 spaces for uh, postgrad and uh, undergrad students. And here is the uh, technology zone with lots of uh, scanners, printers, uh, PCs uh, for rooms. That's a few uh, along the way uh, when you watch the video, I can uh, introduce to you some other um, problems we are facing now. Uh, in the following, <laughs> next actually, um, PowerPoint you can see, uh, I try to analyze the uh, uh, challenges we face. Uh, because of the popularity of this facility, we have to uh, reinvent our um, say, maybe I'll stop this for a while because I have to move on, sorry. And then, um, so. Here you can see, uh, because of the very uh, diversified needs of our users, we have to take care of their uh, concern after the uh, inception of this facility. Here I list some of the major issues of each group. Uh, we collected through the user survey, the daily user comments, and also the user statistics of our, say, online booking systems, and also incident reports from our uh, uh, staff serving at that area. So uh, you can see, uh, we have so many different concerns and uh, issues. And the uh, most important thing for us now uh, is to maintain a very mo robust uh, service design and delivery cycle, trying to make sure that the expectation of our users will be met, but with the uh, balanced uh, distribution of our resources among uh, different groups. And during the uh, period, we have to do a lot of, say, conflict resolution and review of our uh, facility to look for improvement and try to meet their needs and uh, 
balance that environment to maintain an equilibrium of the facility for the interest of all the stakeholders. So thank you, Bob. <laughs>